I wanted to quickly talk about one game that happened Thursday night, and that was the Montreal Washington game. This I don't think you watched it because you're doing doing stuff, but Montreal was ahead in this game three one at one point, and Washington came back and tied it, and then went ahead and took a lead four three. It's late in the third. Montreal ties at four four, and then they score again, and then they score again. It was it was a really really good game as just as a general hockey fan, not just a Canadians fan. Uh, I felt bad for Washington though because they they did play a good game, but uh, that was that was the game Thursday night that I thought was the best. Uh, that sounds a little bit biased because I'm a Canadians fan, but uh, Friday night's game, and we watched we watched the highlights of this, and did we watch some of the game as well? I feel like we did. I think we did, yeah. But we have so much hockey going on. Uh, Colorado six, Vancouver seven. Mm-hmm. This was this was the craziest game. It went back and forth. I don't think a team had a two two goal lead in this game. It was one nothing, one one, two one, two two, three two, three three. It was crazy, and then that uh, it ended in OT. There, it was just a just an awesome game. I hope you guys got a chance to 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 watch that one. Now Saturday, as far as last night, most of the games happened last night, but there was a game on in uh, in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. We watched the majority of this game, and that was the Buffalo Ottawa game. Nine two. That's that's rough. What's going on? That's that's tough. I think it was like six one in the first period or, or something like that. Anderson was pulled after three three goals and then the backup goalie lets in. So I asked six. you that I asked you this at the time, but I'll ask you again on, on the podcast. What are you what is your opinion of should should teams slow down once they're so far ahead? And you gave me an answer and I'll give you a time to explain that now and see if people agree with you. Yeah, I said no. I I don't think you should stop like I don't think you I should agree. stop your your game plan. You should keep scoring and keep going and stuff, and but tone down the celebrations. That's right. If it's if you're up to seven or eight goals, you don't need to celebrate. And uh, Buffalo was being pretty respectful in that game for mm-hmm. the most part. Uh, so they did it right, and um, that that's what that's how Detroit won all those cups around the late '90s and early 2000s. They they get up to get out to leads and then. Instead of switching their game and trying to play defensive and protect the lead, they just keep scoring. It was it was awesome. Uh, Montreal does not do that. Whenever they get in a in a lead, they protect it and then they lose it. Mm-hmm. It's like classic Montreal, and they've mm-hmm. never changed their strategy in the last twenty years. It's really frustrating. Uh, but that was a great game. Uh, next game that happened was the Montreal Tampa Bay game. Uh, Tampa Bay won four one. Carey Price looked really soft, led in some yep. some pretty weak goals there. But on the other end, Vasilevsky made some unbelievable saves because uh, Montreal was just onslaughting them in the first period, uh, and he Vasilevsky totally kept them in the game. The Edmonton Detroit game, four three for Edmonton. Uh, Kostinen was great. Mm-hmm. He got another win. That's he's undefeated this year. Yep. That's man. That's exactly what Edmonton needed: is consistent goaltending, not just from your starter, but from your backup as well. And it could have easily been a four-two game because that one shot that went off the kind of the backboards and kind of came in and crept in by a skate or pad and kind yeah. of went. It was kind of a just a unlucky goal. Uh, he played really well, I thought. Yeah, it was. A, that was a that was a really strange goal. There was a couple of kind of strange goals last night. Uh, the St. Louis Minnesota game. This was this was a terrible game on on St. Louis's part. Five, or sorry, on uh, yeah, on, on St. Louis's part. Minnesota was five. St. Louis was one. Shots were forty-five to sixteen yeah. for Minnesota. <laughs> unacceptable. I think they had four shots at the end of the first. Yeah, and nine shots at the end of the second. That's that's unacceptable. And you, Jake Allen did let in some soft goals, mm-hmm. but you can't blame him. He made forty saves in the game. Yeah, you can't blame him for for losing the game when you're only getting sixteen shots. And that's pretty tough. Yeah, like that's unacceptable. Uh, I. This brings up the question. I. I wasn't even going to bring it up, but let's discuss it. Do you think Jake Allen gets traded? I think Jake Allen might be in trouble in there. I know. think so, too. And I like Jake Allen. Just location bias, probably. Location bias. He's from Fredericton, yeah. <laughs> He's rocking the flag. Like it's. I, I think it's. there's too much chatter. There's, there's just too much chatter. Where does he go? I don't know. Who wants him? Ottawa. Maybe. I don't know. I just said that. They don't <laughs> like, want him. I've never heard that rumor. But if, because there's rumors about Anderson leaving Ottawa. We'll get into that a little bit later, but... Uh, like there's stories of goalies that play terrible, they get traded, new start, they play better. Oh I mean, yeah, obviously it can happen. He's got the potential there. It's just yeah, I just I I agree. He's I think the fans are kind of getting not you know they want to get rid of him. They're yeah. not happy. 
Um, you see, you hear a lot of chatter. There's been people. I don't know. It's just I can't see him making it. It's been he's been in the rumors for a while. Yeah, and St. Louis fans are pretty hard on him, and I, I can understand. I bet he's he's can be inconsistent. But when he's on his game, mm-hmm. he can be the best goalie in the league. It's a lot like Devin Dubnik. A there's, a, there's a lot of goalies that are like that. They have flashes of brilliance. And then yeah. When the time comes, like the majority <laughs> of the time comes, they're just, I yeah, don't know. Exactly. I feel bad for him. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, because he's a good dude. Yeah. Uh, the next game was <laughs> Boston-Nashville. Nashville won one nothing. This was probably the most uneventful game of the night. That's literally what I have written down in my notes. <laughs> it was so uneventful that the NHL app on PlayStation didn't even have a game recap video. Yeah, that's how many non highlights there were. There were four v- individual videos that you could watch, and three of them weren't goals and weren't interesting whatsoever. So let me ask you something. <laughs> say you were, let's say that was a Montreal game. Montreal won one nothing, but it was an absolutely uneventful game. Would you rather watch a game, and I'm talking if you are a, a, a fan in the in the rink. Right. Would you rather see your team lose 6-5 with a super entertaining game, or would you rather a one nothing game where basically nothing happened the entire game? So I take a loss you over a win. You take a loss over a win, but a much more entertaining game to be at or to watch on TV, I guess. Um, I think this, for me... I don't go to NHL games very often. Mm-hmm. I've been to two NHL games in the last 12 years. Mm-hmm. So I would probably choose the entertaining game just for an entertainment standpoint. But I think if I'm a local fan that goes to a lot of games, I'll mm-hmm. take that one nothing win any day yeah. of the week. Yeah, but. that's probably right. I'm the same way. Like just, I've been to like three games, I think. It's expensive for us. Yeah, it's there's nothing close really. I mean, eight hours Montreal, yeah. eight and a half Boston. Um, yep. Staying overnight's not cheap. The tickets aren't cheap. I yeah. mean, they're pretty high market teams. Like it's... So it's, when it, you're not, I've, the last two times I've gone to Boston, they've lost. So I've, I haven't oh, seen them win. Ex, the last time I seen them win was in Montreal against Montreal. Oh no! So it kind of sucks that way. So I don't know. It was a discussion that was brought up somewhere I was reading where people were talking about a stale game versus an entertaining loss, and mm. what would you rather see? And I thought it was kind of interesting. You're not seeing a game for less than five hundred dollars if you're us. Mm, probably not. No, because the tickets alone are going to be at least a hundred dollars. You can't make a day trip of it, really. No, can't. You have to. You have to stay overnight. Mm-hmm. Gas is going to be. I don't know, 120 bucks, maybe something like that. Yeah. And plus food. And you're going to want to buy some merchandise up there probably. And two, 300 for a hotel probably. Yeah. Obviously yeah. that's gets split depending on how many people are going. But yeah. uh, the next game was Vegas and Carolina. Vegas won three, nothing. Uh, Flurry had a great game. Mm-hmm. 29th goaltender in NHL history to get 50 shutouts or more. Yep. That's pretty cool. Yep. Pretty awesome. He did it as, as a golden knight. That was pretty good. Uh, he was he played he played great great that game uh, great home win for Vegas. Uh, New Jersey lost to the Islanders three nothing. Islanders are proving that they don't need Tavares to win. I'm wondering what's up with this Islanders team. Do you think it's just a? I don't know. You think it's you think they can do it? Like, I don't know all season. I don't know because I would say no, but the, every I would say no three games ago. I'd say no two games ago. Like they're playing better than I thought they ever would. Like they, I. Yeah. I don't know if they're just, they got a chip on their shoulder and they're saying, hey, we don't need that guy to, to be successful. I, or, think it, I think that's exactly so what it is. It, it's awesome to see, but I mean, not to bring this back to Discord again, but there's a lot of people when the predictions go out, they predict against the Islanders almost every time and they're always wrong. And they're even <laughs> saying in the chat, why do I keep going against them? Because it, it's just the obvious pick not to take them. So yeah. I think it's pretty awesome. They're, uh, they're surprising a lot of people. They're getting consistent goaltending for the first time in, mm-hmm. in a while. The power play, power play looks looks really good. Um, I have some stats on the Islanders. I'll talk about a little bit later, but uh, I hope the, they I hope they keep it up. The um, I think I, sh- I showed you a part of the clip um, that overtime between Pittsburgh they had a few games ago. Yes, was one of the most in- entertaining overtimes I've ever seen. That was an epic it was poke check back and forth. Uh, he made some great saves. The poke check was awesome. The fans just standing <laughs> up, going nuts over that. So it was awesome. Yeah, it was a great game. I watched the beginning of that game, but unfortunately missed the end of that game, yeah. which was a wrong decision. I should have done it in the opposite <laughs> order, but uh, whatever. Um, Toronto continues to be undefeated on the road. They beat Pittsburgh last night 5 nothing, and uh, R- Morgan Riley specifically was literally all over Everywhere. the Everywhere. Like, Everywhere. Like, like behind the net. In front of the net, on like, the side, and like where he we were watching been. it, and I was like, "What is he doing up there?" And you were just saying he's on fire, and he is. He's everywhere. He's, he's having just, a great season. He's having a great season. <laughs> and it seems like Toronto and Pittsburgh have the same problem. They're terrible at home, and they're great on the road. Yeah, they both have the same problem. You're right, exactly. Uh, anyways, fun. It was a fun game to watch. 
Uh, Dallas played Washington. Uh, Washington was uh, the defin has def Washington has the definition of sniper players. There was two goals in that game, one from Kuznetsov and one from Backstrom, where the goalie was blocking the entire net, and there's just like a literal sliver of net above that shoulder, mm-hmm. and Kuznetsov and Backstrom both scored there. Yeah, like that's the definition of sniper. Yeah, and Backstrom's not considered a sniper; he's a playmaker. Mm-hmm. He's got like forty percent of assists on Ovechkin's goals, so uh, that tells you tells you a lot that a playmaker can even score mm-hmm. when he wants to. Backstrom is very underrated. And like the way that all the goalies are playing the butterfly now, they're they're down a lot before the shots come in. Oh yeah, a lot. Which, which I guess I don't know if they're practicing that during practice. Maybe they are, but it's just it was crazy. It was almost two of the exact same shot yeah. in the same spot with like a hole the size of your fist, and it goes in. It's and, just unbelievable. And the only option to save that. Is your head? That's right. Like you could just because you're already down, you can't. Yeah, yeah, like you can't. You're right. You can't. Your post is there, it's, so you it, can't lift your arm. It's literally a perfect shot. Yeah, it is literally perfect. Uh, and then there was a. I, this is I don't want to say this is controversial, but there was a penalty shot in overtime, mm-hmm. and I personally don't think it should have been a penalty shot I don't either, or a penalty or anything. I thought it was a clean play. There's a lot of times where someone will be on a breakaway in quotes, and they'll get hacked at the hands, yeah. and they just. It's two minutes. Mm. It's two minutes. It's two minutes. And then last night, I think there was two penalty shots, wasn't there? Uh, Maybe there was only one, but I thought... Only one in overtime. Okay, one yeah. in... Yeah. But I don't know. I mean, luckily, I hope we saved that. And But, I mean, they lost a couple of minutes later when What's-His-Face scored. But uh, pretty, pretty pretty good game from, from what we watched. Mm-hmm. The Chicago-Calgary game. Calgary won 5-3. And Chicago played well. At the first half of that game, they had the lead. And then Calgary came back there in the third specifically... Uh, Crawford led in some pretty soft goals. He made one really good save. I don't think he's at a hundred percent yet. Well, he missed so much time. Mm-hmm. It's going to take him, yeah, take him a little bit to get back into mm-hmm. into his game. Uh, but they they had that game, like they they had it, and then they lost. He's it. he's so, played pretty well for the most part since he's been. He back. has. So I mean, it's it's expected that he's going to have bad nights, I guess, or yeah. off nights. But I would say that Chicago's playing. As ex- as expected this mm-hmm. year, not not dominant, fair. but still competitive. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, second last game was the L.A. and Columbus game. Bobrovsky does not look like mm. a typical Bobrovsky. <laughs> no. He he let in some pretty soft goals last mm-hmm. night, but near the end of the game, I think it was Kopitar's goal, the fourth one or the third one. He made an unbelievable pad save mm-hmm. on that first that first shot. It's just. His unreal save, and then he almost got the second one. But and he, he was almost upset with his team or himself that he didn't get the second I, one. Yeah, like, I think he was upset with himself. Yeah, yeah. But uh, he, I don't know how he would have saved it based on how he saved the first one. Though it was almost impossible. Like you get your left pad out and barely stop it with like the toe of your skate or yeah. whatever, and then the next one's come on top right corner. There's no yeah, way you're. And going, he was screened at the time. There's no way you're too. stopping that. Uh, but he ha- he hasn't. Other than that specific play, he hasn't really looked like typical Bobrovsky. And I'm wondering if. The contract situation is weighing on him a little bit, and because this is his final year, mm-hmm. and he's not the only one on the team in that situation. Panera is also in the in that situation. So there's a I don't really want to use the word drama in Columbus, but there's some there's conversations that need to happen. I think between there's them. distractions. There's distractions. That's the right word I'm looking for. Yeah, there's there's distractions there. So uh, a little frustrating for sure if you're a Columbus fan. The final game, San Jose. And Philadelphia, San Jose won four to three. Two very quick goals in this game. Mm-hmm. The ice barely had skate marks on it, and the, <laughs> the lineups were still on the screen. And Philadelphia scored. Yeah. yeah. And then I think it was like three or four minutes later, yeah, San Jose scored again. Three and change, I think. Yeah. It was, it was weird. Mm-hmm. Uh, but San Jose looked so disorganized at time. Like that, there was a Philadelphia goal. I can't remember what one. I think it was the third goal. Brent Burns was doing like pirouettes on yeah. the ice you near know, the circle. I don't know what he was doing, but we were watching it, and Neil calls out, "What are you doing, Burns?" Yeah. Just like, <laughs> jeez. <laughs> um, and then at the end in the OT, Voracek got absolutely oh, stripped. Oh, so bad! It was, it was. I would say embarrassing. It wasn't embarrassing. It looked it was... like a lack of effort. Like I don't totally. know if he was just if he was just winded or tired or whatever, but it, it seemed like it could have been his puck easily. Yeah. And he just lost the battle and it was terrible. I couldn't believe it was Voracek. Y- yeah. Cause you don't see that from Voracek no. very often. I think he was probably winded cause it was overtime. They, mm-hmm. it, depending on what happens, you're out there for yeah. longer than normal, but, uh, uh it, was, it was exciting. It was yeah. exciting overtime. Yeah. 